you are an international medical graduate who wants to practice medicine in the United States. That's great, that's wonderful, you have made an excellent decision. Now the next step is to find out how to do that. The only way to practice medicine as a doctor in the United States, having graduated medicine from a country outside the US, is to take the USMLE STEP exams. USMLE stands for the United States Medical Licensing Examination and the tests themselves are called the STEP tests. Basically, you have to climb three steps, step one, step two and step three. These are the three tests that you have to pass and score very high on. Now, technically there are three exams, but in reality they are more like five because step two and step three have two parts, but we'll get to that in a bit. These three videos, each one dedicated on each step, will be especially useful for those of you who are just starting their USMLE journey or deciding whether to start the journey or not. Honestly, I wish there were more like these videos when I was first deciding whether to start preparing for the USMLE step exams or not because these exams tend to sound and look more difficult than they really are but trust me with the right motivation and preparation they are very much doable. Detailed information on how exactly the United States medical educational system works you can find by watching my video dedicated on this topic because I truly believe that you must understand why they make you take this step exam as an international medical graduate who wants to practice medicine in the United States. Basically, the fact is that every US medical student have to pass these tests. They have to study for them, they have to prepare and they have to score very high. And now you being as an international medical graduate, they want to make sure that your knowledge is equivalent to the medical knowledge a United States medical student receives. That's why they make you take these steps. Now uh, here let me go over the step exams quickly and what uh, they test on and when do people here in the United States take them normally and in each video uh, we'll discuss more uh, of each exam here. Alright, so the step one exam is taken normally after the first two years of medical school. Basically the first two years are basic sciences, right? So step one tests basic sciences. Step two has two parts, step two CK, which is clinical knowledge, which is a computerized test again, and CS stands for clinical skills, which is a practical test. Now these two tests, uh, or these two exams, because the CS is not a test, it's a practical exam, are taken normally in the fourth year of medical school. And the last one, step three, which also has two parts, it's a two-day exam, computerized exam, MCQs, and some uh, clinical cases that you actually uh, do on the computer, they are taken normally after the first year of residency here because it's very very clinically oriented but for international medical graduate most people prefer to take this step three before they apply for residency because this make uh, their application more competitive and uh, keeping in mind that the competition is really really big here for the spots that they have available for residency in the United States it's a very good idea actually to try to um, prepare and pass and actually score high on the step three before you apply for residency. Now the trick is that um, seven years after you take and you pass your step one, you have seven years basically from the date you pass step one to take all three exams or basically five exams, right? Uh, in reality, because if you take step one and seven years later you fail to take all of them for example you have taken step one and step two ck and cs but you haven't taken step three all your results will be deleted from the system they will not exist and you will have to retake all of the exams again but if you take step three if you take them all uh, basically you seal your USMLE examination and you don't have to take any of these tests ever again This video will be dedicated on step two entirely and what will it test you on. Here you can see the list of subjects that are tested on uh, the exam and these are taken from the official USMLE site www.usmle.org. So one to three percent of the exam will be questions that are on general principles of foundational science, basically step one questions. 
85 to 95 percent will be questions on immune system, the hematological system, behavioral health, nervous, skin, musculoskeletal, cardiovascular, respiratory, GI systems, renal systems, uh, pregnancy, childbirth, female reproductive and male reproductive systems, the endocrine system and multiple system processes and disorders. And 1-5% to of the questions will be on biostatistics, epidemiology, population health interpretation and the medical literature. Now, as we said, the step two exams are taken in the fourth year of medical school here in the US. And this exam is more clinically oriented as the name implies, CK stands for clinical knowledge, right? Including diagnosis, prognosis, screenings and management along with a fair amount of biostatistics. Now let's go over the structure of our step two CK exam, the step two clinical knowledge exam. This exam is again a computerized MCQ test which lasts nine hours this time is one hour longer than the step one and it has maximum of 380 MCQs multiple choice questions. These questions are divided into eight blocks in comparison to step one where we had seven blocks and again each block uh, can have maximum of 40 questions but the number of the questions in each block may vary and again you have 45 minutes of uh, official break and 15 minutes from the tutorial if you decide to skip it which every person who takes this test uh, skips be because we are all familiar very well with the software of the test now again uh, I always recommend that you take the first two blocks back to back because your mind is still fresh and then what I personally did and worked perfectly for me is I used to take break after each block after the second block so break after the third block break after the fourth block and so on because you need again to focus on each block and each question entirely you have to give them 100% of your attention and if you start getting tired which does happen on every exam regardless of how much you have been preparing and how many questions have you uh, taken and how much you have practiced already it doesn't matter your brain gets tired your eyes get tired everything is really really tiring emotionally you get very tired on the exam date so you need to pace yourself and use that break and don't be afraid to take breaks after each block so you can uh, have time to recuperate to have something to eat chocolate water to splash your uh, face uh, with cold water if you wish just something that you keep you fresh all the way until the eight block let's go over the structure of our step 2 CS exam the clinical skill part of our step 2 exam so this part is a practical exam there are no MCQs but you're gonna have to meet 12 patients and for each patient you're gonna have 15 minutes to uh, take down the history to perform physical examination and to write your note now having said that these 12 patients are not real patients surprisingly they're actors they're actors who are taught to uh, show you and to exhibit the same complaints and symptoms a real patient would have uh, having a certain disease right so it's very very interesting it's very fun it's a very fast-paced exam and it's a fresher breath of air especially for those of you who uh, like uh, the practical side of medicine and not just doing MCQs. Step 2 CK is equally important again you want to pass the test on first attempt with a score of more than 240. Passing score for CK is 209. As I mentioned in the step 1 video you can actually take the test six times you have six attempts to pass the test but i highly recommend that you do not take it more than once there are people with multiple attempts who match but six attempts on any exam is way too much and matching into residency with so many attempts is 
almost impossible. High score on step 2 also becomes very important for people with low scores on step 1 or with multiple attempts. Ideally your scores should be increasing with each step regardless of how high or low the score on the previous test was. Passing the step to CES on first attempt is also very very important as this is the only practical exam from all three steps and in case god forbid you don't pass it on the first time it leaves a very bad impression of basically you not being able to uh, manage patient real patients but people match with uh, multiple attempts on cs so it's not the end of the world but uh, your goal should be always as i keep telling you pass your test on first attempts with high score. On CS you're scored on three parameters, clinical knowledge, communication and interpersonal skills and a spoken English proficiency. You must pass each parameter or each section of the test in order to pass the whole exam. It's a little bit weird exam as you know that these people are actually actors, they're not real patients, but still it's a lot of fun, at least it was for me. Detailed info you can find again on the official USMLE site www.usmle.org My last words for you guys is that without a doubt the USMLE exams are one of the most difficult exams in the world and you're gonna have to have a lot of mental, physical stamina and in-depth comprehensive medical knowledge in order to tackle them. But having said that they're not impossible, they're very much doable with the right motivation and preparation. It takes a lot of dedication, it takes a lot of time and hard work but it's totally worth it. Just imagine this warm feeling of satisfaction and being proud of yourself that you have actually tackled the most difficult exams in the world. Just imagine this feeling, visualize it and I'm sure that each and every one of you who puts the hard work will be able to experience this in reality. And remember that success comes to those who are looking for it, who are working towards it, who are dreaming of it, who are willing to put the effort and the hard work towards it. And that's why we are here for to facilitate you, to help you through this process, to guide you with, with directions or with medical knowledge, with whatever we can. And I wish you good luck for you all. I'm sure that you will all succeed in your journey. And also let me know if you have any questions whatsoever. I'm always here to help you guys. Good luck again and see you on the next video.